What's up guys, Dalmata here, and today we are going to be reacting to my favorite Japanese physicist's burner account, Grimdark Narrator, Warhammer 40k lore, the Black Consoles Space Marine chapters. Uh, so I've never heard of these guys. Uh, most of these chapters he does, I think, I, well actually I think he specifically chooses them because they're lesser known chapters. So yeah, never heard of them, not sure who they are. Link to the original video down below, and uh, yeah, let's jump into it. Known as the least compromising of all the primogeniture chapters and uh, brooking no deviation from the tenets laid down in the Sacred Code of Astartes, the members of this chapter are stern and compromising. Oh, let me go back to that. Are stern and uncompromising with a history of xenophobia and unusually brutal combat tactics for Ultramarines' successor chapter. Okay, so they're Ultramarines. I think like half of them he's done have been, which I mean kind of makes sense because so many of these, uh, like the Ultramarines are like by far the most popular Space Marine chapter, which is the most popular faction, right? The Imperium Man. Hello there, my fellow battle brothers, and welcome to your weekly dose of individual Space Marine chapters lore. Today's episode is actually gonna be the fulfillment of a subscriber request I received about two weeks ago at my Doom Legion video. So never say I don't take requests or suggestions into consideration. This chapter is actually another Ultramarines. By the way, sorry if you hear some noise. They're doing road construction outside, and the guy that's on the steel drum really likes to use the vibrator on that thing. I used to do, I used to do road construction. You don't need to use it that much. I don't know why he is using it that much, but you know what? Whatever. You do you, man. But you might hear a little bit of, like, mm, vibration. It's buddy outside successor known as the Black Consoles. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about them, shall we? The Black Consoles is a loyalist space marine chapter that was a second founding successor of the Ultramarines. An ancient tome of knowledge known as the Mythos Angelica Mortis lists it as one of the 20 chapters of Astartes founded to make up the Astartes Praises, an ever-vigilant space marine task force assigned to guard the regions of the Imperium surrounding the Eye of Terror. Known as the least compromising of the primogenitor chapters, and brooking no deviation from the tenets laid down in the Codex Astartes, the members of this chapter, whose history is rich with won battles, are stern and uncompromising. They have a history of xenophobia and unusually brutal combat tactics for an Ultramarine's successor chapter. The Black Consuls were recorded as having been annihilated at the Siege of Godef Hive in 455 of M41 or so by elements the of the Word Bearers and Iron Warriors Traitor Legions. For a long time, their status was unknown though Imperial records indicate that the force of Black Consuls is still operating in the Jericho Reach as part of the Achilles Crusade. Yet it is very rare indeed for every one of a chapter's battle brothers to be present at any given battle, even if their homeworld is under attack. Individual squads were more than likely detached to perform special duty or serve as part of a composite Space Marine force attached to a larger Imperial Crusade. Okay, so they are still around then. It's just that they, most of them were wiped out. Individual officers were also more than likely undertaking consular duties, conversing with their opposite numbers in brother chapters in order to coordinate larger scale strategy. Some battle brothers were also likely to have been undertaking duty in the Death Watch. While in the case of the Black Consuls and other primogenitors, individuals or small groups were probably engaged on a pilgrimage to the Shrine of the Primarch on McCrag. Even though, for all intents and purposes, the main force of the Black Consuls chapter may have been destroyed as accounts suggested, some Battle Brothers undoubtedly survived, scattered across the Imperium model. on a myriad of detached duties. Following the start of the Indomitus Crusade in the wake of the resurrection of the chapter's Primarch Robut Gilliman at the end of the 41st millennium, 
the black consoles have been returned to full strength with the introduction of Primaris Space Marine reinforcements upon its home world of Cyclopia. Okay, so with the Primaris Space Marines, we haven't gone too deep into that yet, but they join normal chapters. I thought they were like their own thing, but they, they actually do join normal chapters then. They now serve as stalwart defenders of the Imperium in the Segmentum Pacificus. The Black Consuls were the 77th chapter of the Ultramarines Legion, and it was founded by their first chapter master, Arias Cordos, also known as the Bane of Lorgar. As real sons of Robut Gilliman, they have appeared many times throughout the history of the Imperium, ever ready to stand in defiance of the enemies of the Emperor. The Battle Brothers of this chapter were known to have made regular pilgrimages to the Shrine of the Primarch on Macrag before Gilliman's resurrection, and several past Black Consuls chapter masters were counted among the most valued counselors to the Master of Macrag. The Black Consuls fought alongside their progenitor chapter on hundreds of occasions, as well as other Ultramarine's successors and many other Space Marine units. The Black Consuls were originally a fleet-based chapter, whose spaceborne fortress monastery, the Noctis Obscurum, was destroyed nearly a millennia ago in the 40th millennium by Dark Eldar saboteurs. With the destruction of their star fort, the Black Consuls relocated groundside to the planet of Cyclopia in the Calixis sector. Next, they avenged their dishonor in a 300 standard year xenocidal purge that spanned <laughs> 15 star systems and collapsed an entire sub-dimension of the webway. God damn. They, uh, they were pretty pissed about their spaceship blowing up, eh? The Black Consul's last recorded action before their supposed destruction was during the siege of God F Hive in 455 of M41. Here, the chapter was believed to have been annihilated when Chaos Space Marines detonated the Hive's nucleonic stacks and vaporized much of the northern continent. Imperial records show that, at the very least, a small force of Black Consuls were operating within the Jericho Reach following the launch of the Achilles Crusade. Due to the vagaries of warp travel and communication, it took several decades for word of the chapter's reported demise to reach those isolated battle brothers. Upon hearing the foreboding news, the remaining black consuls took counsel, and every battle brother was allowed to speak. When they concluded the gathering, they agreed that a single Astartes of their number would be dispatched to investigate the truth of the chapter's fate that, and bring back word. Is that somebody's costume or is that a uh, close-up of a mini? Because either way, that looks really good. Like, really realistic. So much of like the, the 40k stuff, a lot of it looks like kind of cartoonish. Um, especially a lot of the older stuff from like the 80s and 90s. Um... But when you do see something that looks like more realistic, like this, it looks so good. To his brothers. That's what I'm going to be interested in when they do the um, the upcoming 40k series with Henry Cavill. I think it's Amazon that's doing it. If I'm not, I think it's Amazon, right? Either way, whoever's doing it. I'm interested to see, do they go for that more like kind of sort of cartoony look, or do they try to make it look hyper-realistic and gritty? The remainder of the consoles would continue to fight on fulfilling their binding oaths to serve the crusade until the messenger returned. Nearly 250 years have passed, and still no word had reached the remaining black consuls as to the true fate of their chapter. They continued to fight the enemies of man within the Jericho Reach as part of the Achilles Crusade, even as their numbers continued to dwindle due to attrition. While they had yet to learn of their chapter's real fate, many battle brothers of the Black Consuls were resigned to the fact that they might very well be the last of their chapter. These warriors continued to fight to the death, determined that the history of their chapter would be one that ended in glorious battle. But since the events that occurred centuries ago during the Siege of God of Hive, there were several unconfirmed reports of Black Consuls strike cruisers launching sudden deadly interventions across the Segmenta Pacificus that had been filtering back to Terra. 
A few notable campaigns and actions this chapter took part in include The Cleansing of the Orb Star The Cleansing of the Orb Star was a campaign which took place within the Orb Star system and saw the forces of the Wordbearer's Traitor Legion cleansed from the system by the newly formed Black Consul's chapter. Afterwards, the chapter master Arias Cordos, who like had immediately the after the horse heresy, became then, known much. as the Bane of Lorgar. <laughs> the, the Bane of, of Lorgar. The fourth company. A battle brother of the Death Watch, bearing no chapter device, arrived at Watch Fortress Ariok, located within the Jericho Rage. This Astartes called himself Hale, and was a lone Space Marine occupant of the rapid strike vessel Unquiet Angel. This Hale claimed that he had learned the location of the remains of the vanished Fourth Company of the Black Consuls, a force lost in its entirety a millennium before. Hale sought the aid of the Death Watch Space Marines at Watch Fortress Ariak in seeking them out. Following a meeting at the Chamber of Vigilance, a kill team joined Hale aboard the Unquiet Angel. Hale led this kill team to a massive space hulk drifting in open space at the edge of the Phages system. The kill team boarded the vessel and succeeded in recovering the banner of the Black Consul's fourth company and a number of other relics, despite being assaulted by scores of warp ghouls and other foul creatures. In gratitude for the eventual recovery of their fellow Battle Brothers' remains some decades later, after a conveyor ship dispatched from Ariok reached their homeworld, the Black Consuls renewed their oaths to the Death Watch and pledged to send three times the previous number of Astartes into the Death Watch service than they had before. Bailiaris Majoris the Black Consuls fought on Bailiaris Majoris against the worldwide uprising of a powerful chaos cult. In the end, they were victorious and burned the heretic prophetess Constanzi as justified retribution. <laughs> By the Dying Light Demonic servants of Tsinch created warp rifts inside each of the twin sons of Hark. Soon, the leering faces upon the stars drove the entire population of the system insane. But the demon's incessant bickering triggered a dual nova event. <laughs> with the fate of the system, <laughs> you know, they, they really create like a a warp storm inside of a star, but they can't stop fighting. So then, <laughs> it fucking ends up backfiring. I'm now measured in hours. The Black Consul's chapter sent in a strike force to recover the sacred relics from the time of their founding. I mean, Captain the old ones and his cartoony. brothers braved both demonic and madmen in the burning cities of Hark to recover the relics, narrowly escaping into the void only moments before the stars died spectacularly. One of the most sacred relics of this chapter is known as Lorgar's Bane. Not to be confused with their chapter master's nickname of the Bane of Lorgar. Lorgar's Bane was a master crafted Astartes power axe, wielded by the Black Consul's first chapter master, Arias Cordos. Some believe that the relic was lost during the disastrous campaign of the Black Consuls on the hive world of Yearsley, where the majority of the Black Consuls were unfortunately killed. Over 100 Chaos Space Marines of the Wordbearer's Traitor Legion have met their end at the razor edge of this power axe. It resides at the moment in the vaults of the Death Watch's fortress Ariok, but as the stories of the Wordbearer's assault on the Black Consul spread, some wonder if it will be brought back against its foes once more. The Black Consuls primarily wear black power armor. The Aquila or Imperialis on the chest guard is gold. The White Squad specialty symbol is indicated on the right shoulder pauldron. A black Roman numeral indicating squad number is stenciled in the center of it. They proudly respect the tenets of the Codex Astartes by wearing their company color on their shoulder pauldron trim. White for first company, yellow for second company, and so on. Black Consul sergeants sport red helmets per ancient tradition. I honestly, I prefer the ones where they just have the one symbol. I don't like when they have like 15 different fucking symbols depending on like what rank you are and stuff. It is just chaos. And then like none of them even look the same. It's so annoying. The Black Consul's chapter badge is the profile of a large, white, 
left facing eagle's head, centered on a field of black. The style of the image is the same used by the White Consoles chapter, although the color scheme is completely different. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Black Consoles Space Marine chapter. Did you find their story interesting? Honestly, for me, the most interesting part was uh, the fact that for a while it wasn't known whether they still existed or not. And then, you know, over the thousand years or whatever it was, it's slowly, you know, between them building back up and people kind of like coming out of the woodworks that have been like off on missions and all this stuff that they realized that they actually still did have a allegiant or not allegiant, a, um, a space marine chapter. I find that really interesting. I find that kind of unique because... Again, like, you know, this is one of the things that I find kind of funny about 40K is they constantly, you know, it's that thing about, like, good storytelling shows you doesn't tell you. 40K kind of does the opposite a lot of the time where they'll tell you one thing and show you the exact opposite, right? They constantly, they're like, you know, it's the end of humanity. You know, humanity's constantly being pushed back. But then everything you read about, ex except, like, with a few examples like Cadia and stuff like that, humanity's just always winning, right? They're supposed to be losing, but they're just always winning. Um, so, you know, the fact that, like, these guys, you know, basically almost got completely wiped out and then had to slowly rebuild, I actually like that story a lot more. Also, the fact that their symbol on the shoulder is the same for everyone, I love that because there was a couple of them that we've watched where he gets to the symbol and it's like, oh yeah, they have this symbol if they're this rank and this symbol if it's this rank and it's rotated this way if it's this rank and it's just like, guys, guys, use the same symbol. Don't make this so, like, complicated. But anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.